Bad cholesterol, also known as LDL or low density lipoprotein, is highly associated with heart disease. And so lowering LDL levels in those at risk for heart disease is a, something that physicians often try to do through medications. Now, for the person who doesn't want to take a prescription drug, are there any ways to naturally lower their bad cholesterol levels? Turns out, yeah. And that's the topic of this quick video, eight science proven ways to naturally lower your bad cholesterol levels. Let's just jump right into it and see what we can find out. Number one, we've got weight loss. Yeah, you can't go wrong with weight loss. There's a multitude of benefits from losing weight if you need to. And it doesn't take a lot of weight loss either to see these benefits. But in terms of low density lipoprotein, bad cholesterol lowering, here we've got an investigation from 2017. We've got 40 overweight kids, average age 11 years of age. They're put on a 10 week weight loss program. And they find that after the study is over, there is a significant reduction in oxidized bad cholesterol. What is that? That's a worse kind of bad cholesterol where free radicals attack the bad cholesterol molecule, and this makes it more likely to cause heart disease. So a little bit of weight loss in these kids, uh, you saw significant reductions in bad cholesterol. Okay, that's great. Weight loss, absolutely, I'd put that number one on my list. Right behind that, I'd say exercise. Again, just like weight loss, multiple benefits coming from exercise, such as lowering of bad cholesterol levels. Here we've got an interesting study. Physical activity uh, improves lipid and weight loss outcomes after metabolic bar bariatric surgery in uh, adolescents with severe obesity. 108 adolescents who went through weight loss surgery um, are, are basically made to exercise. They find that uh, the people who uh, they exercise more, their bad cholesterol goes down, and the more physically active they are, the more exercise they get, the lower their LDL. LDL goes. Lower the LDL, the less the risk of heart disease. Also, they noted lower levels of triglycerides as well. Again, triglycerides are another uh, compound that you want to keep an eye on. They're uh, independent risk factor for strokes. All right, so exercise, weight loss, what else we got? Number three, eat some walnuts. Who knew? Walnuts, again, lots of benefits to eating walnuts, and it does appear they have an effect on blood lipids as well. Walnut consumption and, and in a weight reduction intervention effects on body weight biological measures in blood pressure and satiety. We've got 100 men and women. They're basically put on a diet. Some get walnuts, some don't get walnuts. Um, and then after the study is over, they find that those getting the walnuts have redu reduced, significantly reduced bad cholesterol levels. Uh, again, went down from uh, 121 down to 112 milligrams per deciliter. So walnuts, pretty pretty inexpensive to get them in any supermarket. You can throw them in your oatmeal. Uh, more about that on a second. And again, that's going to do a good job on bad cholesterol levels. Okay, number four aged garlic extract. What is that? It's not garlic. It's an extract isolated from garlic. It actually has multiple clinical studies on it, uh, showing that it has a multitude effects such as this. Aged garlic extract supplementation modifies inflammation and immunity in adults with obesity, a randomized double-line placebo-controlled trial. Basically, they've got 51 people with obesity. They could put them on either a placebo or aged garlic extract uh, for six weeks, and they find that not only did the aged garlic extract uh, alter their immune systems and make the immune system work a little bit better, but also lowered their bad cholesterol levels. Again, this is an intriguing supplement. This is one product I take myself. Um, there's, if you do look into this, uh, you can find it at any health food store, but it, they'll find that there's a whole bunch of formulas out there. There's a bunch of different versions of this. So I'll put a link in the description to the formula that I personally take myself uh, if you want to check it out. Number five, polycosinol. What is that? Polycosinol is another dietary supplement. It's isolated from sugar cane, and there is off, it's sometimes used as an alternative to red yeast rice because it appears to have an effect on cholesterol levels, such as this study. Two-year study of the efficacy and tolerability of polycosinol in patients with type 2 uh, high, high LDL levels, high cholesterol in their blood. Uh, again, two-year-long study, you've got, you've got 69 people, they follow them for two years, they find that polycosinol results in a 25% reduction in bad cholesterol levels, as well as an 18% reduction in total cholesterol. Polycosinol is also interesting because it, it, other studies have also noticed as well, it also appears to raise good cholesterol levels. And that's intriguing because there's not many things out there I can put my finger on that boost HDL, at least in the natural uh, supplement world. And polycosinol appears to be one of them. Again, pretty inexpensive. You can find it at any health food store. Number six is psyllium. Psyllium is a fiber. 
investigation, cholesterol reduction using psyllium husk, do gastrointestinal adverse effects limit compliance? No, it didn't. And reporting this study, started out with 62 people, you ended with 54, still a good amount. Most people didn't have side effects with psyllium. What do they do? They give them 3.5 grams of psyllium husk a day, three times a day. That comes to 10.5 grams of psyllium per day. That's not a lot, by the way. And what do they find after the study is over? LDL levels drop from 174 down to 162. That's a good drop of, of LDL. Again, you're still in the high level, but again, if this study only lasted a few weeks, if it have taken out long, Longer, who knows what it would have led to. Now, if you're saying, what the heck is psyllium? It's odds are that you may have psyllium in your house right now. It's the active ingredient in Metamucil. So go check your kitchen. If you got it, you got psyllium and you know, it, it, you know Metamucil or, or any other psyllium product is not expensive. Number seven is beta-glucan. Beta-glucan is a compound isolated from either oatmeal or barley. And in this investigation, uh, basically they took people, put them on a 10-week uh, study where they basically gave them three, point, excuse me, three grams or five grams a day of uh, barley-derived beta-glucan, and it showed a significant drop in LDL levels um, after just a few weeks. So pretty interesting. So beta-glucan, again, if you have oatmeal, you throw the oat, you throw maybe uh, walnuts in your oatmeal, you know, you're combining two of these things at the same time, all right? And then rounding out number eight would be green tea. Green tea has a multitude of research on it showing that it has a variety of health effects, a lot of antioxidants, etc., and it does appear to lower LDL levels as well. Effects of green tea on lipid metabolism in overweight and obese adults and meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials. So these researchers looked at a bunch of, of previous green tea studies comprised over 1,700 people, and they note that green tea leads to, green tree consumption leads to a significant decrease in total cholesterol as well as bad cholesterol levels. And that's very interesting. So I, 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 would, I would encourage you to drink the tea, um, or as I do, cut open the tea bag and throw it in the blender with your smoothie and then you get the entire green tea. Uh, just one, you know, one or two bags a day is fine. Don't need to go overboard. I like the tea more than green tea supplements because I think there's, I, I think there's more to green tea than you know just the what, what they'll often say is the active ingredient like EGCG or something like that. So I think the the whole food tea is probably better for you. Now, there's eight right off the bat. What do I want, if I want to put them in order, what I think is going to, you know, you, you should do in order, what I think is going to give you the, the, the most return on your investment. Um, weight loss, absolutely. If you need to lose, leave a little bit of weight, that can help, followed by exercise, uh, followed by psyllium, beta-glucan, five is aged garlic extract, polycosinol, green tea, and rounding out the eight is walnuts, okay? Um, I think you'll get a better benefit if you do several things at the same time. Again, I would start with exercise and weight loss if that's necessary. You can throw some walnuts in with your oatmeal, you get your beta-glucan, your beta and again, if you wanna try the aged garlic extract, green tea, and polycosinol, you could do that as well. Um, that's it, guys. If you have any questions, leave a comment below, and I will answer them myself. Until next time, I'm Joe Cannon. Have yourself a great day.